below zero temps, and realizing that your heat went out over the night can be dangerous and expensive. It makes you realize how much we take modern heating systems for granted. Really, it's only been barely two generations since people were shoveling coal and firewood, for that matter, into fireplaces to try to keep their, their house at a livable, uh, a livable, livable temperature, which was, which was uh, you know, we're looking at 40 degrees on a, on a good day. People went to bed with, with heated stones or bricks in, in their bed just, just to keep a, a semblance of warmth um, for at least a portion of the night. People complain about it being cold when their house is below 65 degrees. That would have been heaven for somebody living in this house in 1917. So, it makes you think. So, I'm Eric Cheever, Collections Curator at the Stearns History Museum. Join us today on this episode of My New Old House as, as, uh, as we explore the history of, of home heating. Warmth is a basic human need much like food, clean water, and oxygen. Without it, a person would quickly perish. As humans began to migrate to cooler climates, the battle to stay warm was never ending. Much of the summer was spent stocking up on fuel and preparing for the winter. The winter was spent simply surviving, hoping that the food and fuel supply would last until the spring thaw. Through necessity and ingenuity, people found ever better ways of if not making their shelters comfortable, then at least making them survivable. The first giant steps towards modern central heating occurred when Franz Sangali invented the radiator in 1855, followed in 1885 by Warren Johnson's thermostat. Incidentally, the year 1885 was the first in which Americans burned more coal than wood for heating. By the late 1800s, hot water or steam heating systems were becoming commonplace. Around this time, a man named Dave Lennox began selling the world's first riveted steel furnace, thereby making heat affordable to many more. The typical urban home at the turn of the century either had a giant coal-fired boiler in the basement, or an even more massive gravity feed furnace collectively known as octopus furnaces for their crazy pattern of air ducts that could literally fill the entire basement. Warm air was propelled through the ducts by convection, hence the term gravity feed. The system worked fine for smaller homes, but in a larger house, the rooms farthest from the furnace tended to get very little heat. Alice Parker, an inventor and Howard University graduate from Morristown, New Jersey, became frustrated by the inability to keep her house warm. So she designed the world's first gas-fired central heating system in 1919. By doing so, she laid the groundwork for the rapid advancements that followed. Now, finally, that back room was sure to get some heat. Most furnaces were still coal-fired through the 1940s and into the 1950s. The coal had to be shoveled into the furnace, banked for the night, and clinkers removed in the morning. Importantly, homeowners also had to learn how to control the damper on the flue to obtain the most complete smoke-free combustion possible. Coal is not a clean burning fuel, and your house would fill up with black soot if you didn't have the touch. The biggest advance into what we now recognize as modern HVAC occurred in the 1960s when natural gas and fuel oil replaced coal as the primary fuel source. Gas and oil can be automatically regulated doing away with the shoveling, banking, and cleaning. Furnaces were on their way to becoming nearly invisible. Out of sight, out of mind. Just flip a switch and you magically have warm air. Something unimaginable to so many just a couple short generations ago. Until, of course, your furnace goes out in the middle of the night. Well, we have come a long way from foraging for sticks to keep your house warm in the winter, or shoveling coal into your octopus furnace in the basement, or putting, putting little chunks of, of wood into a parlor stove. We've come a long way. Now heating systems are almost invisible. You generally only know that there's a problem when it quits working. And I guess that's a good thing. So thank you so much for watching this episode of my new old house, and we'll see you next time.